Right, hello and welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged and another edition of our series, Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management, Dynamics A to Z. Today we are back with the letter P. P stands for so many things in Dynamics 365. If I look at modules alone, I get into procurement sourcing, which has probably a hundred different topics we could in get into product information management. We could talk about product versus product masters, product configuration, production control. We could talk about production orders, any of the processes around production, and even master planning, one of our favorite topics. We could talk about planning and planning optimization and some of the new features there. I do, however, want to focus today's session on procurement. P is for procurement, and we'll look at several different forms and reports and processes that can be done with procurement in Dynamics 365. We'll start with our workspaces. We have two main P procurement workspaces, purchase order preparation and purchase order receipt and follow up. There is a new workspace supply risk assessment that we might show in a later edition of this series. Today we're focusing on the letter P, so we'll take a look at purchase order preparation to start with. The first thing you'll notice is the user who has access to this workspace, typically a buyer or somebody who's placing purchase orders, can filter on a buyer group to only see what orders are relevant for them. And they can initiate creation of a new purchase order, whether that is for an inventoried item, a service item, or maybe even a procurement category. They can view all purchase orders and there's out of the box tiles that are associated with different filters and types of orders. For example, orders that have been approved but don't have continued delivery dates. Orders that are assigned to you via work approval, any orders in draft in review, approve and an external review. From a list standpoint, we have similar inquiries that show some of the purchase orders that match those filters. So here's the two purchase orders that are in draft. If I click on approved, you'll see a sub list of the approved purchase orders and you can click on any of those, navigate and go into the details and see more information as well. So that purchase order preparation workspace is really for the initiation or creation of new purchase orders or reviewing ones that are waiting on you for action. Back under workspaces, we then next have our purchase order receipt and follow up workspace. This is used when you need to review what is currently going on for orders that have already been placed. You want to chase up vendors for orders that are past due. You want to see what's needed to be received by vendor or by item. You perhaps want to see what's registered, not received. So for example, what has been registered into stock via the mobile device or not using warehouse management in the arrival overview or manually from a PO line, but hasn't had a product receipt posted. So there is no cost. There's no physical cost. There's no packing slip yet. We don't technically own the inventory, but the inventory is recognized in the system as being on hand because it has been registered. Do we have returns, open returns by vendor? that need to be processed and then searching for orders as well. So purchase, the purchase order receipt and follow up workspace is really for monitoring your vendors and keeping an eye on order exceptions like orders that are past due or waiting to be received or processed further. If I expand the purchase orders tab in the module, you can see there's a lot of other words and menus that start with the letter P, purchase orders, purchase journals, purchase confirmations, receiving products. The purchase order entry submenu is similar to that purchase order preparation, pending purchase orders or orders not sent, not having been confirmed to the vendor yet. 
your purchase order follow up. This is where you can really drill into the details and create queries over different types of open orders and follow up on them. Back order purchase lines is a form that would show all open purchase order lines and automatically based on today's date. So what's expected today or is linked? You can change that date or change that filter range, the date range to focus on what orders are expected based on their current confirmed or requested delivery dates to come in in a certain time. I could also change the order type to look at returns or both receipts and returns, so open POs and return orders. Similarly, I have queries for purchase orders without confirmed delivery dates, purchase orders sent to vendor collaboration, open purchase order lines filtered many different ways. They all open purchase order lines by delivery date, by item, by vendor, and in a more report format. The other sub menus that begin with the letter P, we have planned purchase orders for anyone using master planning, purchase journals. If you have purchase orders of type journal that are more of drafts, they don't affect inventory, they don't affect planning, this would show you those. So for example, if you might want to use that if you're entering purchase orders for hundreds of lines and you don't want that to affect anything else in the supply chain or, or be committed until you're finished processing it. You could use purchase orders of type journal. Sometimes you might send EDI orders in as purchase orders of type journal. Otherwise, you're controlling that process with uh, workflow and, and the purchase confirmation process. Speaking of purchase confirmation, we have purchase order confirmation menu. This is where we can trigger batch jobs or mass updates to confirm purchase orders, review already posted purchase order confirmations and history, and confirm any accepted purchase orders that have been sent over through the vendor collaboration module. Going further down the module, you have purchase requisitions using the system to actually create requisitions to purchase something. Those requisitions can be for items, they can be for procurement categories, they can trigger requests for quotes from multiple vendors, they can automatically be turned into purchase orders. So using those purchase requisitions and any workflow associated with them to improve procurement in your organization. And then we have price, prices and discounts. Prices and discounts are how you set up trade agreements and price control in your organization. So do you have vendor price discount groups? If you have different types of vendors you want to base pricing contracts on rather than individual vendor accounts like wholesale vendors, retail vendors, different regional contracts. In this case, in my sandbox, I just have domestic and international that might have different contracted prices. And then item discount groups in a similar fashion. Do you have items or different groups of items that you want to have pricing agreements with regardless of the vendor account that may be associated with them? We have purchase agreements. Do you want to use the system to have blanket orders and generate call off POs from them? That is what purchase agreements offer and that gives capabilities to have agreements in many different fashion. They can be a single item for a quantity, a single item for a value. They can be categories of items up to a certain that value or volume. So purchase agreements are pretty flexible in terms of blanket orders and setting up those types of rules and contracts. And then finally, like every module, we have periodic tasks, being able to do some processing in batch shops, in this case, finalizing certain purchase orders. In addition to all the menus you do have set up, which of course has many other examples of the letter P procurement sourcing parameters, 
procurement sourcing workflows, policies, having to enable purchase policies that might be intertwined with your workflow. For example, there might be certain types of purchase order changes that you don't want to enforce approval for. You might be using workflow approval for pricing and delivery terms, but if somebody updates the delivery address or a reference field or the mode of delivery, you might want to allow that to be auto approved. So setting purchasing policies to allow for that. Having purchasing policies that associate with your procurement categories is often something you see involved in implementations. We then get back to our prices and discounts. So setting those actually up. If you ever see that certain prices and discounts and trade agreements aren't working correctly, one often overlooked or obvious parameter is the activate price and discount setup. This allows us to say what types of trade agreement journals can be created for price and discount control. Do we allow item prices to be set up by unique vendor ID or account, vendor group, and all vendors. Same thing then for line discounts and item and item groups and vendor and vendor groups, multi-line discounts at item and vendor group levels, and total discounts at vendor and vendor group levels. So this structure is very similar to what we see on the sales side with customers and item groups. And that's it for another edition, a basic overview of the letter P for procurement and sourcing in Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management. We'll see you next time for Dynamics A to Z.